Why So Quilty Life. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. I've got such a fun video for you today, so let's dive in. Today, we're going to be talking about the new Year of Spools June block called So Jammy. Isn't it so scrumptious? I love it. This cute block is part of the 2023 Year of Spools Block of the Month program. I am doing and each month I have a cute spool themed block and this month for June it is a canning jar. Isn't that so cute with the fruit? But I actually have a little surprise with the pattern and because this video is coming out after the pattern has released you already know the surprise. So the surprise is that this pattern comes with many different flavors. <laughs> it comes with the strawberry block, which is the main pattern is focused around. And then it has instructions to make pear block, the peach block, and the apple. The apple and the peach are the same. You just change the color and have a completely different block. So I thought it'd be fun to do a tutorial showing you how to do one of the blocks I have yet to do, the apple block. But I first wanted to show you all of the cute little blocks that I've made. So this is the strawberry one. Super cute. I also made the peach one. Now I haven't pressed this or cleaned all the little strings off of him, but this is my peach block. Super cute. And then this is the pear block that I made. Love this one. I love pears. Pears are so good. I thought this was just the cutest design to do for June. Let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial. You will need your Year of Spools June block. This, again, is available on my website at mysoquiltylife.com. It is a low-priced PDF. It is only in a PDF version, no paper version. So what you first have to decide is what flavor will you be making? Now, you can make them all, but for this tutorial, I am just going to show you one of the blocks, and you will use several of those same techniques in order to do many of the other fruits. So like I said, I'm going to do the apple because I haven't done the apple yet, and I thought it would be super cute to do the apple with the fabric I will show you in just a second. It kind of reminds me of back to school even though I know we just hit summer break, why not get a head start on back to school projects? So I thought this would be so fun to make to show you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started making our block. So what I'll suggest, if you're making the strawberry block, just start with the instructions on page one and go entirely through the rest of the pattern. You don't have to do anything different. But if you're going to make the pear, the peach, or the apple, you will need to turn to a different page on page three and four in order to get the cutting instructions for the pear block and for the peach block. So what I recommend if you are deciding to make another flavor is go ahead and turn to the page three or four, pick which one you're gonna do and go ahead and cut out those pieces. So again, I am doing the apple. So here I have my cute little red apple. We'll turn it this way. I have the mason jar center around the fruit. I'll have my apple. Then turn to page one after you've cut out your fruit. This will help reduce any kind of confusion. And look in the pattern at the strawberry block and decide what pieces you don't need. Because you won't need some of these pieces around here and you definitely won't need what's in the strawberry block. So I went ahead and cut out the rest of my pieces. So I have my top of my mason jars. I'll have my little cute scalloped here. I have my cute little string. And then I am using, instead of pink like I use in my strawberry, I'm actually using this gray with the alphabet on it. This is an older Cory Yoder print from her strawberry jam collection. I thought this would be so cute as my mason jar body and then you have the rest of your background pieces okay so let's go ahead and get started so i'm going to go ahead and turn to page four where the peach block is now again the peach and the apple are the same block so go ahead and cut out your pieces what we're going to do to avoid any confusion is make our fruit block first then go back to the main pattern, make the spool portion of our block. This will just help you stay organized and reduce any confusion you may have. So let's go ahead and start. So step one, you're gonna be taking 
your fabric D squares. So mine are these little background squares. I chose to do something fun. Instead of just the plain background I did on all the other blocks, I wanted to do a low volume. So you're gonna take fabric D and you're gonna draw a diagonal line from corner to corner and you will use these in the next steps. Now, I say this all the time. I actually don't draw a diagonal line on the back anymore. I use the Diagonal Seam Tape by Cluck Cluck Sew. I have this on my machine. I will link it below. And what I do is I just align on my machine the corner of my piece to that middle red line and I sew. Super easy. I used to draw a diagonal line on all of them, but if you don't have that you can definitely still draw a diagonal line. You just need a straight edge and you just line it up. I like to use a friction marker or pen and you just line it up and you draw from corner to corner like that, just like that. Super simple. Okay, so that is step one. So go ahead and do that for the rest of your Ds. Now for step two, we need our fabric F, which is our leaf and two of our fabric Ds. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to place and pay close attention to the diagram, our fabric D squares on our fabric F. And these are little small pieces, so just be careful. You're gonna sew on your diagonal line and then you're gonna press according to the instruction, paying close attention to the pressing so that it this leaf will nest nicely with the apple unit. So I will go ahead and do step two and I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished step two and here we have this little cutie. Okay, so again, the pressing instructions, you wanna make sure that you're pressing towards fabric D square on the top right one. And on the bottom left one, you wanna make sure you're pressing in towards your fabric F rectangle. This is so that when the apple has its corner squares there, that those nest there perfectly and you don't have a bunch of bulk seams. So I'm gonna lay this back over here. So for step three, what we're doing is assembling our B rectangle. So this is our B rectangle right here. B rectangle and our G rectangle to our adorable little F unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You're gonna press towards fabric G, that is the little stem, and I will be right back. Okay, this is gonna be so cute. I just finished with step three. Now I'm gonna set this one up here and we're gonna move on to step four. So for step four, we need our E rectangle and we need our fabric remaining fabric D squares. And what we're going to do is we are just going to assemble them on our diagonal line on each of the corners. So I will go ahead and do that and I'll be right back and we'll be ready to assemble our apple unit. Okay, I just finished with step number four and here we have our adorable little E unit. So you can kind of see how this apple is going together. Our next step, is we are going to be assembling these two together. And you will see on the instructions, there is a black arrow with a number. I am just showing you which seams you are going to sew first and press in those directions. So first we have sewing our stem unit to our E unit. So we'll do that first. Then we will assemble our fabric C. And then we will assemble our fabric A's. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back and we'll get started with the spool portion of the block. Okay, I just finished with step five and my little apple block is just so cute. Look at this, so adorable. I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. I think doing a low volume here was a smart decision. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the spool part of the block. So I'm gonna lay this little cutie up here. If you can still see it, so cute. Okay, so what we did is we went ahead and made our center of the spool unit. So let's go ahead and start on page one with marking on the back of our fabric. So if you can look at your cutting instructions, I suggest so you don't get mixed up, Go ahead and cross out or put a mark next to the ones you either don't need now because you're not doing the strawberry block because these instructions do show it with the strawberry and what to cut out for the strawberry. So go ahead and go through. I will tell you, you don't need F, you don't need E, you don't need H, you don't need J, you don't need K, 
and you don't need X, Y, U, W, and T. Now, <laughs> that was out of order, obviously, <laughs> but I tried to go with the colors, the colors of the pieces. So what you do need, and I'll go through that, you do need fabric A and B, you need fabric C and D, you need fabric I, you need fabric G, L, S, R, Q, and M. You also need N, O, and P. So if you caught those, <laughs> I'll try to put a, um, a little box that pops up letting you know exactly which ones you need, which pieces you need for to make the um, the apple, the peach, and the pear block so you're not confused. And either go ahead and put a mark next to the ones you know you need and maybe like cross out or put an X next to the ones you don't need And if you're not making the strawberry block. Okay, so on the back of all those fabrics that you still need <laughs> to make this block, go ahead and draw a diagonal line. So on the instructions, I have D, E, I, K, O, Q, and W. Again, you don't need some of those letters, so just be aware when you are cutting it. Hopefully that's not confusing, but I wanted to make this as simple as possible, and I thought that rewriting instructions for each of the block totally for the whole spool block was just gonna make this pattern so big. So you'll have to bear with me and do it this way. I promise it'll be easy. Okay, let's move on to step two now that you have your pieces cut out. And for step two, we need two of our fabric L rectangles and our fabric I squares. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a top L unit and a bottom L unit. So this is for the spool block. So imagine if the spool block was like this, you have your spool top and your spool bottom. So go ahead and assemble these fabric I squares onto your L rectangles. Now, as with all of my videos, if you're not using directional fabric for your spool top and bottom, you really can sew them like this and again flip it when you go to sew it but if you are using directional fabric just make sure you do it this way so i'm going to go ahead and start with step two and i'm going to assemble these and i will be right back okay i just finished step two but i wanted to bring it to your attention really quick before i pressed because you might skip over this little small detail that makes a big difference when nesting your seams later on so the bottom unit, you are gonna wanna press towards your fabric L. So it'll look like this. You're gonna wanna press towards your fabric L. And then just the top ones, you're gonna just go ahead and press like normal, press it open to fabric I. So just be mindful of that when you are on this step that these are both pressed in different directions so that the bottom L unit will nest nicely to the pieces when it is assembled. Okay, so officially done with step two. And again, you just wanna make sure that you're pressing the top L unit, these fabric I pieces after you trim them towards fabric I, and then the bottom one towards fabric L. So this is what it would look like turned over. So this is our top and this is our bottom. So just make sure that you don't skip over that small detail because it makes a big difference. Okay, for step three, we are going to be assembling our fabric G rectangles to the sides of our L top unit and our L bottom unit. Okay, so we have our G's. So just like this, you're just going to be assembling it to the sides. So I will go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, I just finished with step three. So we have our top L unit and our bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and set those to the side up here with my little apple block and I will get started on step four. So for step four, you're going to need your fabric M rectangles and you should have four of them and you're going to need your fabric Q squares and you should have eight of those. So what we're gonna do is we are going to be assembling our fabric Q squares to the bottom corners of our fabric M square. Sewing on our diagonal line and trimming and pressing. Now. I chose directional fabric for the center of my spool. Lucky me. So I have to pay close attention to how I position these, but I have a little trick that I've kind of learned. So before I would just place it and I'm like, okay, does that work? Nope. Okay. Does that work? Nope. So my little trick is, 
So you have a directional fabric means you have a one way really to use it because this way it doesn't make any sense. It's not the letters, orientation of the letters are not correct. So what I have learned that you wanna place, and let me know if you already knew this trick, but I learned it like not that long ago. What you wanna do is you want to place, and you can see the back of it. You wanna place your, your, your little square running the wrong, but the, the non-directional way that you want. So meaning my letters face this way, right? So when I flip it, when I stitch and flip it, it will be running the right way. Now, this is one way directional. They make fabric that is two way directional, meaning up and down, it could go either way, but side to side, it can't. This one is a one way directional, meaning it can only go this way. Now you could totally not sew it this way. It's not a big deal. Honestly, for these little pieces, you probably wouldn't even notice, but you see how I have it going this way. So my letters are essentially facing that way. Now, if I turn it over, they're not going the right way. Can you see that? So what I need to do is in addition to having my letters go this way, I also need to make sure that for this side of all of my pieces that the letters go this way. Can you see how the letters are on the back? I don't know if you can see that. You might be like, Heather, what are you talking about? You see the letters, how they're going this way? So when I stitch and flip, they are going the right way. Now that's hard to see. So this probably doesn't make any sense. But, so we're good that way. But on this side, we need to do the opposite. So let's look. We know we need to place our letters this going this way. But let's see, is that upside down? Nope, that's perfect. So really my letters are kind of facing each other. They're going in like this. So I just need to make sure that I am putting all of my little cues, little Q squares on my fabric in the exact same way I did here. So let me see if I can do that. So they go in, they go in, and they go in. Y'all are probably gonna be like, Heather, I cannot even see what you're talking about. You're making no sense. I'll have to do a video on that because it took me a long time. I used to sit there and twirl the piece around until I could actually get it to how I wanted it. But now I just do that little trick where it's, you just place it the opposite way you wanna go. So if I wanna go down, we'll place it the other, the opposite way. Okay, enough rambling. I will get these stitched up and then we will move on to step five. Okay, I went ahead and finished step four. So I have all of my M units. Now you wanna make sure that you are pressing in opposite directions so that these will nest up in our next steps. So I did a good job, <laughs> minus one. One of mine is upside down, but you know what? This is such a small piece. We're never gonna know what that even says, to be honest. Now, if I was using a stripe or some kind of shape that was going the wrong way totally, I would have probably picked that out, but these letters you're never gonna know. But see, look, I knew that would happen. I always say that when I work with directional fabric, I always mess it up. There we go, there's proof. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to step five. For step five, we are just nesting these pieces so that these line up good. And I like to kind of wiggle it till it kind of locks in place. And we're gonna be assembling them all together and then pressing our seams open. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will move on to step six. Okay, I just finished step five. So here we have our M unit. This turned out super cute. Everything is nesting up perfectly. So let's set this to the side and now let's move on to step six. So for step six, we need our fabric R's. These are gonna create those cute little ties that are gonna be at the side of the mason jar. I have had a question about what those are. And um, you know, when you put fabric around a mason jar, you can kind of tie it with a bow. Well, I really wanted to do a bow, you know how I love bows, but I thought it would just add so many extra steps to the instructions and kind of be a little more challenging. And I wanted to make sure this block was um, doable for anybody. So I just opted for the strings, which I still think are super cute. Now you could go ahead and add a bow after quilting if you want, or make your own bow, totally up to you. But I just thought having just the strings come off the side we're gonna be cute enough. So for step six, we're gonna be laying our fabric D squares on our fabric R rectangles. Now you do have two sides, so you wanna make sure that you're doing opposites here. 
you're not going to sew two of these and then turn it because these are not squares they are rectangles so you want to make sure you have your r right unit and your r left unit so i'm going to go ahead and assemble that and press and then we will assemble the rest okay so here i have my pieces again you're going to want to sew fabric d to the top right of your right unit and the top left of your left unit now we're going to take the remaining fabric d's and assemble on your diagonal line here so i will go ahead and do that press and i will be right back okay i just finished with step six and something i love about my patterns is after each step i usually have a measurement in what your piece is supposed to measure after you have assembled some pieces because i know and when i was new and working with other patterns i would want to know exactly the size of the shape without having to go back to the cutting instructions to see what that shape was because for instance sometimes when i sew these stitch and flip corners i have a little bitty tiny piece you can kind of see it right there. You see that little tiny piece where maybe I didn't line it up perfectly. And for this unit, it's okay because you're not actually lining up this with anything. Now here, it's kind of important because you need it to nest perfectly. And if you were a little bit off, those might not nest. But for here, it's totally fine. So just go ahead and, and trim up your units. I know with stitch and flip corners, you might have a little bit of excess to trim up. So go ahead and trim up according to the, in, the measurements and the instructions. And then we are going to assemble our fabric C to the bottom. So I will go ahead and do that and I will be right back. And it looks like I found a little error in the pattern on those measurements. So go ahead and check out my pattern corrections page to see what this is actually supposed to measure. It is correct in the cutting instructions, but in the instructions in step six, I tell you it's actually square, a square measurement, and that is not true. So it is actually what it measures in the cutting instructions for fabric R. So just head over to my pattern corrections tab in my website and we'll get that corrected okay i just finished with step seven and here are my r units so now we're going to be moving on to the remainder of the pattern now step eight goes into making the strawberry block so we're going to go ahead and skip eight nine ten 11 12 13 and immediately go into step 14. now i'm going to go ahead and put these to the side so for step 14, we need our block, our fruit block. Now, if you're making the strawberry, just go right ahead and go on to step eight. Don't worry about this. But if you are making the pear, peach, or apple, you will come back and start with step 14. So for step 14, you're just taking your fruit unit. So for my case, the apple unit or strawberry or peach or pear unit. And you are going to be assembling your fabric O squares on the corner like this and I will make sure it is going correctly the directional fabric on this one because it will be noticeable because these pieces are larger so go ahead and assemble on your diagonal line and we will move on to step 15. okay I just finished with step 14 and I'm so proud of myself everything goes the correct way and I think I'm out of the um danger zone because the rest of the pieces I cut intentionally to be going the right way okay so now we're going to assemble and you'll see what I mean in a second I'm going to assemble the fabric p to the top and bottom and again this diagram shows you what to sew first and then the ends to the side see how I intentionally cut so now I just have to make sure I don't sew it upside down but we're good. We're good. We're in the safe zone. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble our fabric P to the top and bottom of our apple unit and our fabric N to the sides. And I will be right back. Okay, I just finished with step 15. And here is my middle unit. This is so adorable. Now, I don't think I said like why I used gray, but I thought it could resemble a chalkboard. A chalkboard for teachers and an apple 
for teachers. I don't know. Those are like the staple things I think about when I think about teachers and back to school gifts and stuff like that. Even though I know from most of my teacher friends, they prefer not to receive an Apple or teacher related items as gifts. But I thought this could be a really cute, turn it into a really cute bag for a teacher that also likes to sew. So I thought that could be a really great idea. So let's move on to step 16. So I'm going to set this one aside. For step 16, we just need our top L unit, so our top one, and our fabric S. And what we're going to do is we're going to assemble fabric S to the bottom of our top L unit. Be sure to try to sew straight because with this solid fabric, if you're using solid fabric in this narrow of a piece, you will see if it is uneven. So just keep that in mind when sewing. So I will do that and then we will move on to step 17. Okay, so I just finished with step 16 and this is starting to take shape. So our next part is basically sewing the entire spool middle unit together. So let's go ahead and set this aside. And what we need is our M unit. Set those aside because we don't need those. We need our middle unit. And we need our right R unit and our left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the top the M unit to the top of the middle unit, and then we're gonna assemble the R units to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, here we have our spool middle unit. Oh my goodness, this is so adorable. Okay, we are almost done. So let's move on to step 18. We need to assemble our top L unit and our bottom L unit. So. This is pretty easy. You're just assembling it. Just make sure you're sewing straight so that doesn't look a little crooked. And this is the one that needs some a little bit more attention. You need these seams to line up and nest right here, which is why I had you press towards fabric L on this one. So I know I've done several videos about how I get that to line up, but what I like to do is go ahead and put it where it should be. It looks like mine's a little bigger, which is totally fine. I will just pull it a little bit. So look how bad that would be if I sewed my quarter inch seam. That would be so off. So what I do is I move it at my machine or here until I get it to where it would look best, which is right there. And then I will put a pin in it, put a pin in it, and I will do this to the other side as well. Now I noticed when making mine a couple times, I did have a little bit extra. So what I do is I just pull this a little bit tight when I'm sewing it to get it to lay flat and not have that bulk in the seam. Let's see. So you'll want to put a pin in it right here. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna sew and I will be right back. Okay, so now I got the bottom on here. So now I'm going to to the top. So again, you're just assembling the top and making sure that you are stitching in a straight line so that it's not crooked. So I will do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I have just finished with step 18 and this looks super, super cute. I am so in love, so in love. Okay, let's move on to step 19, the final step. So what we're going to do is assemble our fabric B rectangles to our spool unit, and then fabric A to the top. Again, if you're not turning this into the a quilt, um, you could hold off on putting these little sashing pieces on if you just wanted to turn this into something else or use it for another quilt. This does measure at 12 inch finished, 12 and a half unfinished if you need it for another project or quilt. But I'm going ahead and putting all my sashing strips on so that when I do make a quilt or projects for the settings I have planned for you, they will all be ready to go. So let's assemble fabric B to the side of our spool unit and fabric A and I will be right back with the final block. Okay, are you ready to see my final so jammy apple block? Here it is. Oh my goodness, this is so adorable. I love it so much. I love my decision to do this cu this cute little letter print by Cory Yoder in gray. It really seriously reminds me of <laughs> a teacher. I 
I instantly, when I was like picking fabrics to do this block, I was like, this reminds me of something cute for a teacher. So I am so happy with it. I think it would look even cute with a green border and make it into a wall hanging or mini quilt for your wall, for your classroom. If you're a teacher and you sew and quilt, this is so perfect. So now I have made all four blocks, the strawberry, the peach, the pear, and the apple. And I'm just not quite ready to say which one is my favorite. I love them all. So if you love them all too, feel free to make them all, share them on social media using the hashtag so jammy block. If you are new here and have no idea what I'm talking about with this year of spools, block of the month, head on over to my blog at mysoquiltylife.com and check out a blog post. Um, on, usually on any of the blog posts, I have information for each of the blocks. I have information about the year of spools, but that just goes over into more detail about what it is and what happens in December with all the settings I'm going to be giving you for free, as well as where's the January block? <laughs> I get that question a lot. You guys, I'm almost half tempted to release the January block, but I'm holding to my December date. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already so you don't miss out on any of the videos. Also, feel free to leave a comment below letting me know which flavor is your favorite and which one or ones you will be making. I will link everything I mentioned in the video um, in the description box below. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.